The gentleman from Texas, Mr. Weber, the chairman of the Energy Subcommittee, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Peters, um, I'm going to move over here a little to my left. It'll be one of the rare times I do. Um, this committee has taken a leading role in advocating for advanced nuclear energy research. Specifically, my bipartisan nuclear energy research legislation has passed the House on multiple occasions. This bill would authorize the construction of a research reactor, versatile neutron source. I wish the gentleman from California was here, uh, Mr. Rohrbach, were here this questioning, which you mentioned in your testimony, the, nu the nuclear versatile neutron source. And it'll open up for national labs uh, for the development of prototypes for advanced reactors. That's the aim. So, Dr. Peters, why is it important, in your opinion, for the Department of Energy to invest in a research reactor? So we thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for all the support uh, of what we do. Um, so, just just quickly, we do operate test reactors already. Uh, uh, INL operates the advanced test reactor and the transient test reactor, two large reactors. Um, the high flux isotope reactors operate at Oak Ridge. So they operate at a certain, uh, not to get too much into the physics, but they produce thermal neutrons as opposed to fast neutrons, which your, talk, which your, which your new proposed reactor would do. So we have that capability, but if, if a company or a university professor or, or a lab person wants to do research on materials that would be apropos to a reactor that's operating in a fast neutron spectrum, they have to go to a place like Russia or a place like China to get those fast neutrons. So right now, the United States does not have that capability. Right, and that's unacceptable. I think Dr. Maxson said earlier about com companies are re reluctant to invest until they see the, the, the uh, dependability of something coming on. So if the United States does fall behind, you mentioned Russia and China, uh, that has international implications in nuclear research. It, it, it does, and it also has national security implications more broadly. If, we're not, if we don't have a strong civil nuclear sector, we don't have a seat at the table right. internationally. Well, I, I want to go back to Chairman Smith's question about the battery for Dr. Kearns. Can you give us a time frame of when that five times more powerful battery? <laughs> when can we expect this, nuke, this versatile neutron reactor? Oh, the, 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 the versatile fast neutron source could be in place pending appropriations in 10 years. 10 years, yeah. okay. Yeah. When we get a better, uh, better answer from Dr. Kearns, you said within five years. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. All right. So well, it's we, nuclear versus battery, sir. So, uh. <laughs> so we maybe need to have some bidding going on here. <laughs> um, if this legislation is signed into law, uh, what role do you expect INL to play in designing and building this test reactor? We, we already have a team formed with actually Argonne and Oak Ridge. Uh, my hope is is that it would be built at the at the INL. Uh, I've got a I've got a place picked out. Uh, it's ready. It's ready to go. But we've got a team formed. So as appropriations comes on, we're ready to we're ready to run. Okay, and Dr. Kearns, how about the Argonne National Lab? We seem like we have some collaboration oh, going yes, on here. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and certainly, uh, uh, Chairman Smith uh, paid a very nice tribute, if you will, to Enrico Fermi, really the founding father of Argonne, in his introductory comments. And Argonne's uh, maintained, if you will, a deep expertise in uh, nuclear technology from day one. And we are very actively partnered with uh, Idaho and Oak Ridge, uh, really, in terms of development of the new test reactor. Uh, we like to think that there's a little bit of argon in every uh, nuclear power plant that's been built, and that certainly we continue to, to really want to participate in a very active way in uh, support the development of the test so reactor. Is it your testimony here today that you'll put pressure on him to get it down to five years? <laughs> Let me ask a question for all in my last minute. Last Congress, the House passed the America Competes Reauthorization Act, which provided national laboratory directors with the flexibility, the ability to authorize cooperative research agreements uh, in priority research valued at up to $1 million. Good thing, bad thing, Dr. Seastrom, I'll go to you. I think it's a very good thing. Okay. Uh, these kind of craters advance our interests substantially. I'll just mention one example. Uh, Sandia has worked with Goodyear through crater mechanism for over 25 years. Uh, we brought our advanced modeling and simulation capabilities to their business of designing tires. You might not think that nuclear weapons and tires have a lot in common, but the kind of material interactions that we deal with in both areas are um, significant. Okay. They're able to improve their time to cycle, and we're able to improve the codes that we do for the nu nuclear weapons. Perfect. Weapon. Let me move to Dr. Max. And good thing, bad thing? Definitely a good thing. I, well said. I can't add much more. We have plenty of examples, too. Okay. Dr. Cow? Good thing, yes, as well. Dr. Kearns? 
Yes, a very good thing. Very good. Okay, Dr. Peters. Good thing, and we need more things like it. Okay, we're working on that. Mr. Chairman, I've got three seconds. I yield back to you. 